Hey guys, welcome back. If you haven't subscribed yet, consider pressing the subscribe button and maybe the notification. I appreciate it. It helps to grow my channel. Uh, this project is going to be a super easy beginner's project. It is simply going to be the creation of a digital signage or a kiosk. I was asked by a local nonprofit if I could come up with some kind of solution that was really easy for them to use. And I think this meets that criteria. Basically, the monitor is a DVI monitor. And if you don't know it yet, DVI actually can be used with HDMI inputs. It just doesn't have the audio. So I picked this guy up for $7 at a thrift store. And I am using a Raspberry Pi that I already had, Raspberry Pi 3 Plus. You can get these for between $30 to $50. Um, I also uh, mounted an outlet on the back. So all the power is condensed into one place. And all of the power cords have been shortened. So there's not really a lot. There's one main power cord. All they need to do is show up at the convention, conference, wherever they're trying to uh, share their message and plug it in. And it will automatically start to go through the slides. It can also support video. And you can also change how this works in terms of um, timing for the slides, how long it takes. I added a button to the Raspberry Pi that allows you to shut it off. So by pressing this button, it basically starts to turn everything off, comes up with this message, and as soon as the screen goes black, all they have to do is unplug it and load it back in there. That's it. Unplug it and load it back into their car. When they get to where they're going and they want to power it back on again, all they have to do is plug it in. The device comes up. It does take a few minutes. It actually is going to go into an X Windows interface before it starts executing. And I'm going to show you how all that stuff works. We're going to look at the software. Uh, we'll look at the hardware, like the off button. Uh, auto start. We'll go back to the computer uh, in just a minute to look through that. So XN, uh, X, the X Windows desktop will, uh, will pop up here in a second. It does an auto login. The X Windows desktop will pop up. This background is just the default wallpaper, but of course you will probably want to put a wallpaper that's appropriate for whatever uh, your organization is. Uh, scouts, you know, Girl Scouts for cookies. And then it starts going through the slides. These slides are obviously from videos I've produced. So anyway, let's go over to the computer. We'll connect to it. I'll show you how it all gets set up and we'll talk about the Raspberry Pi changes also. Well, I told you this project is easy and it is. To wire up the power off button, all you need to do is tie pin 5 to ground. Pin 5 is GPIO, General Purpose IO Pin 3. And if you look here, you can actually see where the ground is and the um, GPIO 3 pin. All you do is put a switch between them. And when you press the button, if you're running a fairly modern version of uh, the Raspberry Pi OS, it will detect that if you update the config file. Let's go take a look at the config file real quick and I'll show you where you update it. Okay, so I've logged into my Pi and we need to go to the boot directory. And there's a file in there called config.txt. We'll do a sudo nano, it's an easy editor, config.txt, pull it up, and you need to put this line within the uh, file, and then save it. Uh, D, uh, DT overlay equals GPIO dash shutdown. That's all that's necessary to cause your shutdown button that's connected between those two pins to cause the device to shut down. Really that simple. Okay, now what we're going to do is take a look at some of the software um, and how that works. So I looked at actually four different software packages for doing a digital signage. There's actually a lot of uh, very advanced digital signage packages which allow you to connect remotely and you know do all sorts of stuff. That's overkill for what I was trying to do. So the first one 
uh, piece of software I looked at was QIV, and I loved QIV. It was very fast, very easy to use. The problem is, is that um, the nonprofit I'm doing this for said uh, they would like to be able to have video once in a while, and I couldn't do that with QIV, or at least I couldn't figure out how to do it. So then I tried PQIV, which supposedly has video support, but I had some problems. And I got to be honest, I don't remember exactly what the problems were, but I think it had to do with the transitions and the time it took to come up. And anyway, it's probably a very good package. And if you have more time, you can kind of play around with it and see if it'll do what you need. I ended up going with this one called MPV, and I actually like this one a lot. So MPV, I'll share the, the link to this, this reference, which has all of the instructions for different command line options. But it does a really good job. Um, I kick it off in the auto start, which I'll show you in a few moments. And it basically will play anything. You point it at a directory. You can give it a control playlist as well. But I just point it at a directory. And when the machine boots and it gets to the X uh, Windows desktop, the auto start kicks off and you get a presentation going. So it works really well. All right, let's take a look at um, how you set up your auto start. So we've gotten the boot configuration file changed. Now we're going to set up the auto start. The auto start is actually owned by the um, directory owner. So in this case, I've logged in as pi. Um, and so let me show you how you do this. Basically, you want to go to your .config directory. And in the config directory, you should have a directory called LX session. If you don't, there is a special command that you can run that will copy it. So you can basically copy recursively from this location into your config. You do need this directory to exist. Once you have that directory, you're going to go into it. And you're going to go into the uh, dash pi version, lxde dash pi, cdl, lxde dash pi. And inside here is the auto start. Now you don't need to sudo to run nano, the editor, to get into auto start since this is your file. So we can just do a nano auto start. And the only thing I did was I turned off the screensaver for X because we don't want a screensaver. And I give the command MPV full screen. Make sure you're on top. Don't put a border. Any image rotations will have a five second delay. So it'll show for five seconds. I want it to loop forever, infinity. And then you give it the name of the directory where the slides are. And that's all there is to it. And you save it. So if we go back to my home directory, you'll see that I have Stuart slides. And inside there, I have all the slides. And if we look at these, you'll see that I've actually named them 1 through 11 so that they'll actually display in a specific order. Um, you can also use a config file, a playlist file for MPV if you if you want to. As I said, MPV will also support video. So you can just drop the video in. Um, you'll obviously, if you want sound, you'll need to hook up uh, a speaker. The Pi has has a uh, 3.5 millimeter audio output on it. But in this case, um, I don't have one on my demo. Uh, just the slides. Anyway, that's all there is to it. Then basically you shut it down and um, restart it and it'll come up and start doing the slides. I'm going to go back over to the bench. I'm going to show you. We can hook a keyboard and a mouse to the uh, display, uh, this, the, the digital signage display. And um, I'll show you a few things you might want to change in X um, just to make the device more secure. Okay, so using this in a real world situation, I would definitely turn off Bluetooth and I would turn off Wi-Fi. You don't want anybody accessing this while it's going through the presentation. Also, if you want to change certain settings, you can, you can sudo uh, raspy conf. 
Now this allows you to do things like the auto login. If you go to system options number five, you can change it so that it auto logs in. So if for some reason your uh, Pi won't auto log in, you can actually control it through this application. The other thing that's nice about this application is, is that you can go in and change the interface options. You can turn on and off SSH, VNC. So anyway, I would not plug in a keyboard or a mouse in a, at a presentation event like a conference or, or a convention or something where it's actually sitting on the table. You don't want people interfacing with it. All right, well, with that, I hope this was a project you were interested in. Like, like always, learn something new every day, and I'll see you for the next project. Thank you very much. And your cat is not in the video because cats like to be in videos. Come on, pumpkin.